Well, a very good and blessed Wednesday to you, my brothers and sisters in Jesus, on this, the third Wednesday in the season of Lent. And around here, what we've been doing on Wednesdays on both, uh, or in both our in-person worship, but also our online worship, is taking a look at some selections from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 to 7. Uh, it's a section in the Gospels, <clears throat> specifically in the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus talks to us about what it means to be disciples. And so around here, during the season of Lent, we're kind of talking about healthy habits for intentional discipleship, what it means to live on purpose. So we thought it might be a good idea to hit up some selections from the Gospel of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 to 7. And as I was kind of thinking about that, um, out of Pastor Mike's words to us last Wednesday, uh, kind of a refrain in the Sermon of the Mount that kept in just kind of stuck in my head over the past week was just a single verse in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, where Jesus says this as part of the Beatitudes, uh, kind of the early, one of the earlier sections in the Sermon on the Mount. And so uh, as you see these words, maybe say these words with me. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. It's a single verse, but there's actually a whole lot in that verse that I want to take some time to unpack uh, here today. Uh, Jesus uses this word kind of repeatedly in this section on the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed. Blessed are those. Blessed are the humble, blessed are the meek, blessed are those. And so this word blessed actually communicates something a little bit more than happiness. Jesus isn't saying happy is the person who kind of has this as their identity or does these things. No, not happy, but blessed. And that word for blessed in the original language really communicates kind of an enjoying a special advantage or privileged recipient of God's favor closely related to God himself is kind of the weight of what's behind that word blessed. Uh, Paul writes in Ephesians 3 verses 20 to 21 that maybe is as helpful as we think about what this word blessed means. Uh, the Lord is doing a work beyond your capability and ability. When Paul writes in Ephesians 3, now to him who is able, that's Jesus, now to him, that's Jesus, who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So when Jesus says, blessed are those here specifically that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled, kind of the weight of that is not just a kind of a loose, happy term, but there's a special advantage there. There's a privileged uh, you're a privileged recipient of God's favor here, closely related to God himself, and God is doing something in you that's beyond your own abilities and capabilities. So that's kind of the weight of that word, blessed. But here specifically, Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. And um, maybe the weight of what Jesus is saying here is be careful of that I have arrived mentality. Right, that hunger and thirst language really carries the, the meaning of continue to pursue that, continue to be hungry for that, continue to be thirsty for that. Uh, be careful of the I've arrived mentality in our walk as disciples of Jesus. Very easy in our faith to sort of convince ourselves that we've arrived, we've sort of done that, sort of been there, sort of learned that, sort of put in my time check those boxes, and I've arrived. And Jesus is suggesting, no, um, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Uh, one of uh, the commentaries on the Gospel of Matthew by an author named Alfred Plummer, uh, Plummer writes this, he says, to believe oneself to be in possession of righteousness, like the Pharisee in the parable, is fatal. One must feel the want of it and have a passionate and persistent longing for it. Um, around here during the Bills playoff run, one of the phrases that was used over and over and over was, stay humble and hungry, humble and hungry. And in the area of sports, you know, we certainly get that. In a sports team, 
We'd never be okay with our favorite sports teams, you know, becoming complacent or not staying hungry. It's kind of that expectation and that, that want for, for them to get better, right? For our sports teams to get better, to stay hungry, to stay after it. And I think that's probably a good way to understand what Jesus is suggesting here, that sort of that arrived mentality is really dangerous to our faith. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst for something specific. Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And this word righteousness, sometimes when we hear that, we think of right and wrong, sort of good things and bad things, right things and not right things. But really that word for righteousness, uh, don't think right or wrong, but right standing or restored relationship. And as the scriptures talk about righteousness, restored relationship, really kind of a right standing or restored relationship with others. And so kind of that graphic there, you know, the yellow stick figure maybe represents you, represents me, and all of those other figures represent others in our lives. And those arrows, as they point out, or as they point toward others, a reminder to us that right standing, restored relationships is a product of us kind of intentionally making right those relationships. And if, if, we, all, if we wait for others to kind of do that, if it becomes all about me, well, that's kind of not going to work real well when I turn inward. But if I can look outward, right, and make my life not about me, but about others, not just simply in terms of right or wrong, but in terms of right standing, restored relationship. If I were to think about those arrows pointing outward, and the scriptures actually give us some really valuable tools as we think about that. The Ten Commandments in the Old Testament, when God gives his law to the people, we often think about the Ten Commandments in terms of God taking all our fun away, right? There's right or wrong. But it's actually, you know, in our Lutheran tradition, we understand the Ten Commandments as a curb, a mirror, and a guide that helps us. As we internalize the law of God, we're actually doing this restoration of relationships well in our world. In Galatians, Paul gives us a list, the fruits of the Spirit, that when we're doing this well, it looks like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Uh, forbearance. He gives us this list of when we're doing this well, this is kind of what it looks like. It's a super helpful and useful tool. Um, and so not to reduce it to right or wrong, but to think about it in terms of restored relationship, rightness, uh, right standing with others. Now the scriptures, uh, as Jesus comes on the scene and gives his life on the cross rises from the dead, ascends into heaven, promises to come back again one day. Uh, Paul writes in Romans 3 of a different kind of righteousness. Paul writes in Romans 3 that a new kind of righteousness has come to us apart from our attempts to restore right relationships in the lives of others. Paul says in Romans chapter 3 that a righteousness apart from the law has come to us in Christ Jesus our Lord, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but all have been made right, have been justified through faith in Christ Jesus. So that graphic on the right side, you know, the cross obviously representing Jesus, the yellow stick figure representing you, but notice the direction of these arrows. The direction of these arrows are all from Jesus to you, all from Jesus to me. And as Paul writes this in Ephesians 3, uh, verses 21 and following, he's reminding the church, he's reminding me, he's reminding you that there's a different kind of righteousness, a second kind of rightness, restored relationship that comes from God to you. And notice the direction of that arrow is only one way. It's from uh, the Lord Jesus to you. So really the question as we dig in here to what Jesus is talking about in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Which one is Jesus talking about here? Is he talking about the illustration on the left, or is he talking about the illustration on the right? As Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Is Jesus talking about our rightness, our restoration of relationship with others, 
Or is he talking about our rightness, our restoration of relationship with him? Which one is Jesus talking about here? And the answer is probably yes. It's probably both of them, both the one on the left and the one on the right. However, as Jesus is talking about it, and as we as his followers, as disciples, understand this, it's probably right, uh, right, it's probably helpful for us to flip the graphics. To flip the graphics as we think about righteousness, to begin with our right standing, our relationship with God on account of Christ, this new righteousness that's ours in Jesus that God has done for us, and that really winds up shaping how we think about our right standing with others. So it's actually helpful for us to flip those two graphics and kind of think about them in that order. First, our righteousness in Christ kind of shapes who we are. And then, as we think about our rightness with others, our restoration of relationship with others. And as the scriptures talk about it, it's more than just two kinds of righteousness, as we've kind of talked about in our Lutheran tradition. Lots of, has been written about that. It's more than just two kinds of righteousness, but actually, conceptually, but actually the one winds up shaping the other. And so with an added red arrow here, you know, our right standing, our restored relationship with God on account of Jesus actually transforms now the way my right standing and my restored relationship attempts with other people go. And so as I begin to get this right, hungering and thirsting for the righteousness of Christ in my life, that's actually going to begin to transform and shape how I do that in the lives of others. And the New Testament talks quite a bit about this transformation that happens as I, as I sort of become more aware and pursue that righteousness of Christ in my life, knowing that he's doing that in me that actually winds up shaping big time uh, how my life goes with others. And so kind of the last part of what Jesus says here, he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And what does he mean by they will be filled? Well, maybe this graphic is now helpful. First and foremost, kind of getting our right standing and restoration of relationship with God, that fills us up. And then we're able to kind of deliver that more and more into the lives of others. And so the one shapes the other. The one really transforms the other. And it's not just concept. As the righteousness of Christ transforms you, more your life is able to transform others. As the righteousness of Christ meets you right where you are and right where I am and all of my sin and my failure and my guilt and my shame, as that transforms me, now, as a child of God, I'm able to do some transformation in right living, not simply in terms of right or wrong, although that language is helpful, but as I think about restored relationship, right standing with another brother or sister, the righteousness of Christ really shapes that in me. And so the whole of that verse, Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Hey, on this, the third Wednesday in Advent, that you would know that in Jesus, uh, you're forgiven, for sure, that you belong to Jesus, for sure, that he's strengthening your faith, absolutely. But there's something even beyond that that's going on. There's a righteousness, apart from the law, that's come to you in Jesus Christ, and that is forming and shaping you more than you know. And Jesus makes us his promise that blessed are those who hunger and thirst for that, they're gonna be filled. Blessed are those who don't have an arrived mentality there. It's gonna be a, a divine, a special advantage, something beyond your own ability and capability. And as that meets you in your life, so then your life is able to be a greater blessing to others as your life blesses others with, a, with divine favor and a divine backing behind it. So uh, maybe that's a word of encouragement for you to know that the Lord Jesus meets you right where you are uh, today and uh, in his word uh, through uh, these words, specific words in Matthew chapter five, verse six. And as we wrap up our time in the message, uh, our Lenten prayer is gonna come up here and I'm gonna ask that you pray this with me. Let's pray. 
Dear Lord, grant me the wisdom to see a longer view of my life. Give me courage to make the changes I need to make. Help my actions reflect what I say is most important as I worship together with my church family, engage my brothers and sisters in Christ, and love others well in this community. Continue to form me into the child you want me to be. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, as this day comes to a close, receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Blessings on the rest of your day. Blessings on the rest of your week. And we'll see you soon.